Hi, my name is Richard Lang. In this film I'm going to invite you to take a fresh look at yourself, a fresh look at your identity. But why should you do this? If someone were to inform you that really you were a king or a queen, and that you owned dozens of castles and yachts and so on, wouldn't you want to see if it were true? And if it were true, wouldn't you want to claim your inheritance? Well, there's an ancient body of wisdom that says that who we normally think of as ourselves, the one we see in the mirror, isn't all that we are. That's our public identity, who we are on the outside. We also have a private identity, an inner self, and our inner self is far richer and more powerful than any king or queen. Boundless and timeless, it's the source and container of everything. According to this ancient wisdom, the purpose of life is awakening to our private identity, our inner self. Looking steadily within at our divine nature, we claim our inheritance, eternal peace and unfading joy. Remaining open to this infinitely wise, loving and creative source within us, we find ourselves blessed in countless ways. In this film, I'm not going to ask you to believe this ancient wisdom. Instead, I'm going to invite you to carry out experiments that test it, so that you can see for yourself if this claim about who we really are is true or not. First, I'll rephrase this spiritual claim about our identity in modern physical terms. What we are at centre, at zero distance, is nothing like what we are from, say, four feet away, or from any range, in fact. Science accepts this idea. What things are depends partly on the range of the observer. You're looking at me from a few feet away. From there, I'm human, I'm Richard. But if you were to come up to me using microscopes, you'd leave Richard behind and come to a layer of cells. And coming closer, you'd come to a layer of molecules, and then atoms, particles, and so on, down to practically nothing at all. In other words, we have layers like an onion. If instead of zooming in towards me, you were to zoom away from me, then you would view other layers of me. Moving away, you'd find that Richard would be replaced by London, and then by England, then by the planet, the star, the galaxy, and so on. Here's a diagram of these outer layers. We need every one of our layers to exist. To breathe, we need not only our lungs and the cells and molecules that make up our lungs, we also need the rest of life, the atmosphere, the sun and so on. Though we identify primarily with what we look like from a few feet away, with our human layer, we need every layer. It's one undivided system. Who or what is at the centre of all these layers, right at the heart of this worldwide system? Who am I right here? Who are you right there? In other words, who are we really? Others can tell us what we are from a distance, but they cannot tell us what we are at centre simply because they cannot get here. Others always remain outside us, distant from us. But each one of us is at our own centre, so each one of us is perfectly placed to see what we ourselves are at centre. I'm looking at my own centre now, and I find here no face, no appearance. Instead, I find boundless transparency, aware space full of the whole world. I cannot show you this space. Whenever you look at me, you'll always find something here. At that range, you can see my face. But what I can do is invite you to look there where you are, 
to see if you're in the same boundless condition there as I am here. So let's see if this amazing claim about you, about me, about everyone is true. If it is true, and if awareness of this inner reality becomes the norm in society, I believe that all life on this planet will benefit. The first experiment I'm going to guide you through is the pointing experiment. 